Jesus is a source of comfort, strength, and direction. <laughs> so I want you to invite you into this world of numbers and gain strength from it. California has a special problem. And it's a little bit masked when you live in Silicon Valley. <clears throat> Let's look at California data, eighth graders. There's only one measure you can use, and that's NAEP, National Assessment of Educational Progress. It is a beautiful stratified random sampling test of eighth graders' knowledge of mathematics, science, reading. When you look at this, this is low-income students. Here's California. It's between Alabama and Mississippi. <clears throat> I understand that some of you did not grow up in the United States. Let me just tell you, being between Alabama and Mississippi <laughs> is Old Testament bad. We're talking about frogs, rivers of blood, locusts. It would be hard to design a system that could be positioned between Mississippi and Alabama. <clears throat> On the international TIMS, California and Alabama, two of the nine states that participated, this is true. They tied with the Islamic Republic of Iran and Kazakhstan in science performance. I mean, can you? God! <laughs> the Islamic Republic of Iran and California are tied on eighth grade Tim science performance. We got work to do, guys. And solutions have to deal with problems of this magnitude. Notice the highest performer is Texas. And that's a good thing because when Texas does well, everybody believes they can do better. <laughs> See, Massachusetts and Texas are always neck and neck. Um, what's the difference practically? Each 10 points is slightly more than a year of learning. So a low-income child in California is, by the eighth grade, slightly more than two years behind a similar student in Texas or Massachusetts. And when you break it down by cities, rural, it holds up on every subset of the population. This is really bad. It means the accident of going to school in California essentially limits your life opportunities. Here's higher income students. Usually the Hoover folks who used to critique this data until they ran out of arguments um, pointed out, but California really it's about the wealthy. They're going to be the future of the state. Not really. Where's uh, California? Now it's a little better. We're right next to New Mexico and Mississippi, and between, between New Mexico and Oklahoma. Not very good. Massachusetts and Texas are at the top of the country. What made Massachusetts and Texas at the top of the country? Not that they had a common political culture, you can count on that. <laughs> but they had virtually identical infrastructures. Penny Noyce, the Massachusetts State Systemic Initiative, the Texas State Systemic Initiative, Massive infrastructure building, tools, rituals, structures for schools, intelligent leadership, a business community that kept the legislature, which is a machine for reconciling short-term competing interests, a powerful business community that held both states to a long-term, 10-year-plus plan for improvement. In California, the business community has never been able to get its shit together and present a coherent image. As one Texas oil man put it, California business guys actually believe in our cowboy myth. This is the, the, these are the real issues that have to be attended to. And now Hispanics, the fastest growing uh, minority group. So proficiency on NAEP. Here are all the states. The three states in red are the states that substantially perform lower than national average. So this is controlling now for ethnicity, and you can do it by income and other variables. Only 10% of Hispanic school children in California meet the proficiency standard. It's a quarter of the students in Texas and 20% in Massachusetts. 
when you look at solutions, look at them against the scale of the problem facing us and our children. Now, here's a graph of all California high schools. So each dot is a high school. The size of the dot talks about how many graduates. And this is the SAT criterion, which California is very proud of. A 1,500 on the SAT means you're college ready. That's the top half of SAT scores, and it means you have a 75% chance of getting a C in your first college math course. This is a very low bar of college readiness. Blue means largely white and Asian. We don't use Asian here because Asian is a universe of different uh, universes of different ethnicities. There's no coherence in that population. So look at here you have mathematicians who would say a strong nonlinear downward slope. There are basically no schools in California where 20 percent of the students, where 80 percent of the students are low income and 20 percent of the students graduate college ready. That's the California landscape. In order to be college ready in California, you need to be on the left hand side and up. You need to be white Asian in a school with no poor people. There are a few exceptions. That's Pruce. That's a, a, highly, a school for gifted children at University of California, San Diego, where they systematically recruit extremely gifted young people, minority students, and serve them together in a school. That's a charter that's currently under criminal investigation for faking their data. And the guy who <laughs> ran it, I'm not kidding. These two are charters where there's criminal conviction and they've just lost their licenses. That's Sanger, which is a beautiful school in near Fr district near Fresno where they have built reliable support structures for teachers. But outside of those, basically your poverty level and who you go to school with in California determines your educational outcomes. If there's anything that's un-American, it's the idea that the accident of where you live should determine your principal opportunities in life. That is the problem that California has to actually deal with. Now, it's not that we haven't made progress. If you look at NAEP in the fourth grade, children have learned massive amounts over the last 20 years. And if you look at this, black and Hispanic children in the United States now know what white children in the United States knew 20 years ago. In Texas and Massachusetts, that's a six-year difference. In California, it projects to a 35-year difference. It's not good. Right. Some states, the gap is, it'll never close this way, because when you raise standards, advantaged populations always capitalize them on them, on them first. But you can close the gaps this way. Make it three years, two years, one year lag. In Texas and Massachusetts, it's about six and a half years in both cases. In California, the lines never cross. So this is a, has to do with how we build system infrastructure for supporting children's learning. And small innovations, however important they are, are not going to solve this problem. Notice massive increases in the numbers of black and Latino students taking advanced courses. These are good things, and they're things we have to build on. So I just want to show you, as my time has come to an end, what the Common Core is going to look like in practice, and then come back to the big problem we have, really need to solve as a country. This is a standard item directly from the California standard test. This is what our kids are getting in California. I'd like you to read the problem, and with doing no math, tell me what's the right answer. Tell your neighbor what the right answer is. I can sense the anxiety rising. <laughs> Don't think as math students. Think of consumers as consumers. Okay, what do you think it is? B, right? Indeed it is B. 
about half the items on the California uh, state test, you don't actually have to do any math. And there are whole test taking industries that are organized around this. Here's the common core version. Take a minute with this one and I'll just give you just these small differences. This is a typical PISA item that's been incorporated into the Smarter Balanced Assessments. <coughs> Same math, very different reasoning. I'm not going to ask you for the answers here. <laughs> right now, if you go to many schools in San Jose and around San Jose, kids will be sitting in math class for a quarter of the semester practicing the other kind of problem on tests. They spend an enormous amount of time, 35 days, involved in test prep for tests that are not worthy of them nor of the disciplines they represent. As soon as we start requiring students to do items like this, it's going to require talk, analysis, imagination. Uh -huh. That will require a completely different organization of schooling and support for teachers. There is no solution to this problem where individual teachers get better through professional development. There's no one-dimensional solution which will somehow immunize their kids against the stresses of these items. These are all core pieces, as, you, as Eduardo presented. It's a big pyramid of things that students need. So when you evaluate, I'll skip these and go to this. What is this about? What it is about is me managing my PowerPoint better. This was the thing that in the end pushed the governors to do stuff they don't normally do, which is work together. For the first time in American society, the likelihood that a child will have a better standard of living than their parents is not assured. These are earning elasticity measures. 0.5 means that half of the disadvantage of a poor family is passed on to their children on average. Very little upward mobility. The chance that you can move from the bottom quartile to the top quartile is almost zero for most ethnic groups in the United States now. Why is this important? This is the problem. Because Americans have some character faults. One of them is we prefer nostalgia over actual history. <laughs> we like to believe that democracy will always be here. Why? Because the founding fathers were brilliant. Democracies are incredibly fragile. Think of the Weimar Republic in Germany. The thing that keeps American democracy alive is the belief that through hard work and education you can improve your life. As soon as we have large numbers of disenfranchised people no longer believing that hard work and effort can get a better life in America, we're screwed. So as a community of educators and leading philanthropists, Keep these problems in your mind when you vet solutions for improving educational systems. Thank you. <laughs>